Believe it or not, a solution to the age-old problem of potholes. I'm Richard Pyde, a live report coming up next. Fort Wayne police continue their search for a team of bank robbers. And an Ohio school system has to tighten its belt during tough economic times. In weather, Jay tells us how long this great weather is going to last. <laughs> in sports, Greg will show you a near no-hitter in Chicago. This and more coming up next. This is WPTA-TV Fort Wayne, a granite broadcasting company station. Your number one news with Keith Edwards, Marty Wright, Greg Johans, and Jay Walker. Now, the latest from the 21 Alive newsroom. Good evening, everyone. They are the object of our anger, frustration, and they cause hundreds of dollars of damage. They spring up every spring and, like a plague, seem to spread across the highways and side streets alike. They are potholes, and efforts to fix them are often temporary at best, but there may be a solution in Fort Wayne's future. 21 Alive's Richard Pied is live with more on this welcome news, Rich. Oh, well, Marty and Eric, you are so right. And talk about a problem that people just love to complain about. Everyone has their least favorite pothole or stretch of road, and with good reason. We've got some of our favorite potholes uh, hitting the traffic right now. Look at this one, so deep. People are even using it as an ashtray. I guess that's a good use for the thing. And then right beside it, some of the old gravel that they used to repair the darn things. It just gets put right back on the side of the road where it began. And people often wonder, why can't they find a way to fix these potholes? Well, believe it or not, they have. This may be the answer to the question, why don't they fix these potholes? It's the state of the art as far as pothole patching goes. The big difference being the repairs last. Why the machine has been successful is because the repairs stay in place. And we've been selling this machine since 1977. And, and I think the best thing we can say is our customers come back and buy more machines. Compare the machine to the old-fashioned and, by the way, current way potholes are now fixed. All that messy gravel with a cold patch? Yuck! With the machine, the gravel is kept to a minimum. Best of all, the finished product doesn't squish out. That's a trade term for the manufacturer, by the way. And it looks like this thing will be much easier on workers. So the stone's coated completely around before right. it even comes out of the right. nozzle. Line. Take it from guys who should know. You've probably filled many a pothole in your day, haven't you? Yes, I have. Would you rather <laughs> use this machine than use the old way? I think so. It'd be easier on the back, I'm sure. <laughs> now, here's the catch. One of these goes for $45,000 or so. The good news is that there's enough money to buy two. The city ought to be patching potholes as early as May if they can find the right deal. And there's plenty of people who hope they find it. We're back here. You think the siren that you hear in the background is to fix the potholes? Unfortunately not. Traffic uh, going right next to me here, but you can see this one is pretty deep. This would be ideal for that pothole machine, but unfortunately it's not going to be available until May or so. Believe it or not, the toll road in Indiana is already using these things with some success. Have you ever hit a pothole on the toll road? I haven't traveled it lately. Have you, uh, Eric and Marty? <laughs> No, but you know, really. since the county uh, economic development income tax passed, we were supposed to see progress soon in the uh, counties and cities potholes. What's the status of that, Rich? Well, the county uh, the county development income tax is uh, going to help pay for this. This is a capital uh, a purchase, though. The machine is a capital purchase, so it would come out of a different fund anyway. And uh, they have the money that has been transferred into that budget to buy the machine. So uh, the uh, county economic economic development tax would help uh, pay for some of the manpower and stuff to fix these things, mm -hmm. but the machine should just speed that up all the more. That's Sounds real good, good news Sounds for good. us. Thanks a lot, Rich. All right. Well, Marion police are hoping articles of clothing belonging to a missing college co-ed will yield clues that lead them to her. The clothing was found last Wednesday. It's believed to belong to 19-year-old Trisha Reitler. She was last seen Tuesday night while walking to a nearby drugstore. Investigators say Reitler's jeans and top are being examined for evidence. Meanwhile, police are working round the clock on the case. Fort Wayne police are still searching for suspects in the Summit City's latest bank heist. It wasn't quite 9.30 this morning when two men drove up to the Indiana International Bank building on Coliseum Boulevard, ran into the building, and took over. Well, one subject stood guard at the door while the other subject uh, jumped over the counter. Uh, accosted one of the tellers and demanded money out of the vault. The robber forced the teller into the bank and proceeded to fill a duffel bag with cash, a large amount of cash, according to police. The suspects then made their getaway good in a late model red Trans Am automobile. An ambulance was called to the scene to check the teller, who was slightly injured in the shoulder when struck by one of the robbers. 
Fingerprint experts were called in to dust the place for prints. So far, no suspect names or identities have been released, just descriptions of the two men, described as male blacks, one 5'7", 150 pounds, wearing a dark jacket and black cap, the other 5'4", 145 pounds, wearing a goose down jacket and carrying a rifle case. The abandoned getaway Trans Am was recovered shortly after the robbery just off Ridgewood Avenue. Governor Evan Bayh is meeting in a joint session of the General Assembly tonight to push his Medicaid plan. Bayh said last week he would deliver his plan this week to solve the budget dilemma presented by the increasing cost of delivering health care to the state's poor. The governor says he can cut $500 million from the Medicaid budget by executive order, but to meet targeted spending levels, he says the legislature must make an additional $326 million in cuts. 150 job seekers are scheduled for training classes at the Sears Telecatalog Center right here in Fort Wayne. The center was scheduled to close April 15th, but due to a surge in catalog orders, the facility will remain open for at least two more weeks. Sears officials are hoping to employ four to 600 additional workers. If you're interested, call Sears at 456-2000. General Motors pickup trucks are once again under attack. A consumer watchdog group says the automaker has the technology to protect gas tanks on its pickups from fiery explosions, but has decided not to use that technology. The group says all that's needed is a protective cage around the side-mounted fuel tanks. The Center for Auto Safety wants the government to crash test GM trucks with the protective frames and press the automaker to declare a recall. The owners of WAJI Radio have just acquired another FM station in the Summit City. Sarkis Tarzian Incorporated announced today it will purchase WJLT, making it the only company owning two FM stations in Fort Wayne. Both stations will operate out of a studio on West Berry Street. Sarkis Tarzian Incorporated operates radio stations in Bloomington and television stations in Tennessee and Nevada. Well, an Ohio school system is facing financial problems. That story coming up next from the newsroom. This is the captain. Set the ship's course at 180. Speed 10. We are free to pursue life's simple pleasures because they're out here guaranteeing that freedom. The Navy, out here today, safeguarding your tomorrow. A little common sense can make a job easier and safer. This long handled shovel can help prevent back strain. Piling the dirt on a tarp will protect your lawn. And a phone call can help protect you from digging into an underground power line at home or at work call for help in locating power lines before you dig. Touching one of these lines with anything could result in serious or fatal injury. Please be careful because they haven't made a shovel yet that can do this. Call before you dig. It's April's Burger of the Month. McDonald's double quarter pounder with cheese, two quarter pound patties, two slices of American cheese, ketchup, mustard, onion, and pickles on a big tasty bun. It's big, it's delicious, and after April, it's gone. Performax from Pennzoil. New synthetic motor oil with Pennzoil's exclusive star molecule. Protects engine parts and ignition. Works like liquid ball bearings. Hangs tough during the most extreme driving conditions. Flows in severe cold. Performax from Pennzoil. Keeps its cool in extreme heat. Performax protects to the max. Get protection to the max. Get Performax. Available at your local Pennzoil featured installers. Parkway Local School District is in crisis. School officials will have to make cuts in 23 areas next school year if district residents vote down a levy on May 4th. 21 Alive's Elizabeth Nolf reports the school district is facing cuts in programs, classes, and extracurricular activities. More than 12,000 students attend Parkway Local Schools. It's a much larger district since its merger last year with Menden Local. But Superintendent Gary Graham says when the districts merged, the tax base went to the new district. Parkway had a low millage, Ohio's system of taxing. With the merger, the tax rate not only dropped in what used to be Menden Local District, but also in Parkway. The merger itself has been very, very positive for our kids. And looking down the road, we think we'll be in much better shape. Uh, these first couple years, we realize it's going to be very, very tight. 
Parkway local teachers did not receive a raise this year, but next year, if residents vote down the levy, any teacher whose position is vacated due to retirement will not be replaced. That's one of 23 cuts. Other cuts include no middle school algebra or computer classes, no talented and gifted programs, the adoption of new textbooks will be suspended, only a minimum of educational testing will take place, and there will be no athletic or other extracurricular activities. I believe it's critical that it pass because uh, of the academics, first of all, but I believe the extracurriculars are most important, too, to keep our young people busy off the street. Parkway local school board president and its superintendent say the school system will be operating at nearly a quarter million dollar deficit next year. The 8.9 mil operating levy would bring in a half a million dollars a year for three years, which would also counter the state of Ohio's decrease in education funding and the school district's increase in operating costs. I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, trying to meet our students' needs and not having uh, necessarily the funds to go along with the programs that we're not only required to do, but that our children need. Even if the tax levy does pass this May 4th, officials say some cuts will still have to be made, but they stress they'll be the cuts that will have the least effect on academics and extracurricular activities. In Rockford, Elizabeth Nolf, 21 Alive News. A unique partnership between St. Francis College and Fort Wayne Parks and Recreation will benefit both organizations. The two announced today the college will be allowed to use the Lindenwood Environmental Center as an outdoor study lab. The center is a wildlife and nature preserve owned by the city. St. Francis students will use it to take samples, collect species, and conduct nature and biology studies. St. Francis' use, I think, is, uh, exemplifies the, the intended uh, use and the best use of the property, and that is uh, nature appreciation, environmental study, and that sort of thing. And I think the, the arrangement that we have executed today with St. Francis is, is going to greatly enhance the, the intended use of the property, and, and we're very excited about that. Volunteer students from the college will also help maintain the preserve and document existing species of plants and animals. Looks that's, great. That's a beautiful area right across from Lindenwood Cemetery. Sounds gorgeous. Nice. Okay. Oh. Gorgeous. Speaking of gorgeous, the weather was beautiful today. It's a delightful day. It could have been better. I mean, we're just not getting those sunny days. I mean, it started off really nice. Yes, clouds yes. came in. We'll find out how long it's going to last when we come back. The right shirt and tie can make a great suit look even better. And now at SK, we have special sale prices on famous names suit, shirt, and tie combinations. This entire outfit is yours for just $125. This classic combination from Deansgate is just $175. Or choose this all wool tailor's row suit combination on sale for just $225. At SK, I promise you'll find the quality you can be proud of at a sale price we're proud of. Shop SK at Glenbrook Commons next to Glenbrook Square Mall. Selecting a new car. Bus on Illinois Road. Hurry in today. Give us another one like this, Jay. Or better. Well, our better is or better. out the window. <laughs> Forget our better. We're, we're going to struggle to give you another one like today. Okay. We can see in the forecast. Our temperature under skies that are partly sunny, 51 degrees. Winds are out of the southeast. They're at 6. Our humidity is 64%. The barometer, 30.14 and holding steady tad precipitation officially at the airport since midnight. Our high reading for the day, 55. Pretty well on target for our normal of 56. Nowhere near that record high, so back in 1929 of 83. Our overnight low last night, 38, a bit above the normal of 36. And our record low, 18, set back in 1982. Sequence of satellite pictures, two storms, one in the nation's midsection and the other along the Atlantic coast, moving up along the Atlantic uh, seaboard at this time. Heavy rains uh, from the southeast up to the mid-Atlantic states. Uh, beach erosion, a real problem. Some flooding going on due to the heavy rains uh, with the, associated with that storm center. As you can see, the clouds circulating around that. The other one moving from the Rockies into the Plain states. Clouds circulating around a rather strong storm center that will be moving toward the Great Lakes and affecting our weather toward the latter part of the week into the weekend. Right now, skies are cloudy over much of the Hoosier State. A few high, thin clouds in areas, a few breaks here and there, but nonetheless, a lot of clouds over Indiana, the Ohio Valley, portions of the Great Lakes. You can see a bit of a clearing off to our southwest into central and southern Illinois. That will kind of work its way across Indiana overnight. 
The storm center along the Atlantic coast, a history of rather violent weather all the way from Florida. Now some stormy weather into the uh, off the coast of the Carolinas and Virginia. Snow will fall in the higher elevations back into West Virginia and Virginia. Clear skies up into New England, cloudy skies into the upper Ohio Valley, much of the Great Lakes, the next system out west. We're kind of sandwiched in between these two systems, so really nothing really affecting our weather. The counterclockwise winds around this system and this system will help to warm us up, but it'll also bring a lot of moist air into the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes, so we will see a lot of clouds, even though temperatures will be on the mild side. This will bring wintry conditions to the Dakotas and portions of the Plains states where winter storm warnings and watches have been posted for some areas of the Dakotas, the Nebraska Panhandle, and back into Colorado where they've already had about a foot of snow in the higher elevations, a couple of inches of snow up to six inches in some parts of New Mexico, and some heavy snows up into Wyoming. So this is a rather nasty uh, system, a vigorous one, moving very slowly toward the Great Lakes area. Temperatures around the Hoosier State at this time are mainly in the upper, thir or upper 40s, I'm sorry, Low 50s. All right, I lied. Okay, it's low 50s. You can see that for yourself. Through northern Indiana, into the low 50s, mid 50s, through the central part of the state, down in southern Indiana, 60 degrees now at Evansville. Western Ohio, temperatures there hovering right around 50 degrees. By late tomorrow, that slow moving system along the Atlantic coast still moving up the Atlantic seaboard. This one's slowly moving through the Plain states. Once again, we're kind of in between. We'll see a little bit of sunshine, some clouds, and more moisture coming into the Great Lakes region. Here's how my forecast looks for us tonight. Skies will be partly cloudy to cloudy. Low will drop to about 38. Then for tomorrow, look for a high of about 58. That'll be under skies. It'll be partly sunny, and that'll be stretching it. There will be quite a few clouds. Our extended outlook indicating, <coughs> excuse me, that temperatures will gradually warm uh, to near 60 degrees. By the latter part of the week, we do have the threat of showers developing probably maybe late tomorrow and a chance of a shower Thursday, but the best chance would be on Friday, although Thursday we can see some isolated thunder showers. Quite a few clouds as we head into the weekend with temperatures cooling down at that time. So we just can't get that good yeah. spring fever weather. Well, let's we try need. for Easter. Okay. Okay. We'll work on it. <laughs> Eric. Brings into the sports and a lot of excitement to Wrigley Field, field today. Yeah, a pitcher's duel and a near no-hitter. I'll have that as well as the rest of the sports news coming up next after a break. What do you listen to the radio for? Do you really like silly disc jockey chatter? How about those dumb contests? They hate when they talk over the music. Worried about your child? Keep your eye out for these warning charter, please. Get help somewhere. Fort Wayne's new radio station is music. Music 92.3 FM. Elton John, Phil Collins, Whitney Houston, all specially programmed for long listening at home or work. Music 92.3 FM. What makes a Dairy Queen frozen Easter cake so special? Because it's all dressed up with our finest treat, delicious Dairy Queen chocolate and vanilla soft serve. Plus, there's a layer of chocolate fudge and chocolate crunch. But the icing on the cake is you can get it decorated our way or your way. Dairy Queen makes Easter dinner dessert a piece of cake. We treat you right. Dairy Queen. Well, people like to come here in the afternoons because they know they're going to save lots of money when they come here at Scott's. And you'll save this week, too, on 95% lean Dubuque whole boneless ham. Just $1.29 a pound at Scott's. People save a lot of money. Don't miss the savings on all varieties of Seifert's potato chips. 14.2 to 14 and a half ounce bags are only $1.59. We always walk away feeling like we have extra money in our pockets. Scott's, we're your store. Well, the Cubs got even today. Yeah, in two games at Wrigley Field, there's only been two runs scored. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a hitter's ballpark, too. Yesterday, Greg Maddox and the Atlanta Braves shut out the Chicago Cubs one to nothing. Well, today, the Cubs turned the table and Jose Guzman shut out the Braves, one to nothing. Well, just as the Braves did yesterday, the Cubs score their only run in the first inning. Mark Grace, a base hit through the right side for a one to nothing lead. Cub pitcher Jose Guzman makes it hold up. He has a no-hitter with two outs in the ninth inning. One more out to go, but Otis Nixon breaks up the no-hitter with a line shot to left. Guzman coming that close to pitching the first no-hitter by a Cub in over 20 years. But he gets out of the jam on this blooper to left field that Ray Sanchez hauls in. It's a one-hitter by Jose Guzman and the Cubs' first victory of the season. The final score over the Braves, one to nothing. In the American League this afternoon, California, three to one over Milwaukee on a three-hitter by Mark Langston. 
Late last night, the Oakland A's pounded the Detroit Tigers 9-4. The Tigers take the lead in the second inning when Mickey Tettleton clobbers one over the wall in right field for a 1-0 Tiger advantage. But the A's tie it in the third when Ruben Sierra smashes one past Cecil Fielder at first base. That drives in a run. In the fifth, down 2-1. Oakland ties it again. This time, Ricky Henderson with a double down the left field line. Later on in the inning, Troy Neal pops a two-run homer to right. Eric Fox hits a grand slam later on in the eighth. And Bob Welch gets win number 200 on his career as Oakland wins at 9-4. The playoff dates for the series between the Comets and the Cleveland Lumberjacks have been released. The Comets will open their series at home Friday night, April 16th at 8 o'clock. The second game will also be at the Coliseum on Sunday, April 18th at 6 o'clock. Now, playoff tickets to the general public go on sale this Saturday at noon at the Coliseum Ticket Office and all Ticketmaster outlets. IPFW's volleyball team has moved up in the latest national rankings. The Dons, last week number 10 in the country, are now number 7. They have a record of 20 and 6. The Green Bay Packers say they've come to an agreement with free agent defensive end Reggie White, the seven-time All-Pro with Philadelphia had talked with many teams before narrowing his list down to three, the Packers, San Francisco, and Washington. The Packers' offer is said to be worth for, uh, $17 million over four years. Miami of Ohio basketball coach Joby Wright has taken over the head coaching job at the University of Wyoming. Wright, of course, was a player and assistant coach for 10 years under Bob Knight at IU. In his three years at Miami of Ohio, Wright's teams won 66% of its games. Michigan basketball fans are having a tough time accepting last night's loss to North Carolina in the NCAA championship game, especially when a mental mistake cost them the game. Michigan looks strong in the first half of play. The Wolverines kick it out to Rob Palenka, who hits the three-pointer. Michigan leads by 10 at halftime. This time, Palenka drives, misses the shot, but Chris Weber scores, gets fouled, a three-point play. Back comes North Carolina. The Tar Heels make up the difference, and they take a six-point lead at halftime. They get 25 points from Donald Williams. He drills this one from way out. Eric Montross helps Carolina take a two-point lead with time running out. Then Chris Weber calls a timeout, even though Michigan has none left. A technical foul. North Carolina hits two free throws to put the game out of reach, and no one felt worse about the mistake than Chris Weber. Just called a timeout. We didn't have one. That probably cost us the game. Truthfully, I really, you know, I really don't remember all the situations. All I know is that obviously I, I didn't. I didn't. I don't think I saw anybody that was open. And then the count was on, I just did not know we had a timeout. If it was someone else to pass it to, I would have passed it to them. I don't remember. Maybe someone was open. I don't know. Well, it sounded like the whole bench was saying, call timeout, call timeout. I think the, everybody in the stands was calling timeout, too. So it came pretty much from everywhere at that point. <coughs> now the big question is, will Chris Weber put this play behind him and turn pro? He's projected to be a top five pick. Or will he help the Wolverines try for another run at the NCAA title? Time will tell. Tonight's stumper, what is Chris Weber's real first name? His real first name, the answer in just a minute. I didn't know you could be penalized for that, but he must feel awful oh, about that. Gosh. <laughs> but, you know, he, he's going to have to put it behind him. Right. Top you five will. draft pick, would you go pro? Multi-million dollar contract yes. in front of your nose? Yes. You're yeah, out of I here. think so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Speaking of money, <laughs> on Wall Street today, the stock market finished a little lower. The Dow Jones Industrial has lost more than a point in heavy trading. 291 million shares changed hands. What do you get when you take away the tires, the chainsaws, the drain pipes? You get Spartan Stores. You get all your grocery needs, you get in and out in a hurry, and savings like these. Gold metal regular or unbleached flour, 79 cents. Folgers ground coffee, 319. Parquet margarine, 39 cents. And Eckridge smoked or Polish sausage, $1.67 per pound. Spartan Stores, the fresh food people. How do my glasses feel when I put them on in the morning? But that's nothing compared to the afternoon. And by evening, that's close. Now, get free frames when you purchase New Vision's exclusive weightless or thin light lenses, or any other New Vision special feature lens. I feel like the weight of the world's been lifted off my nose. Free frames with the purchase of New Vision's special feature lenses.
Need a match? Call Matchmaker International right now. It offers features like anti-lock brakes, traction control, touring suspension, and dual airbags. But if all that doesn't move you, perhaps its 214 horsepower engine will. The award-winning Eagle Vision TSI. Buy or lease one at your dealer today. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. Here's a look at some of the stories we're working to bring you tonight at 10. She came to this country as an exchange student, but now she can't return to her native land due to the war in Yugoslavia. We'll have her story later tonight, and the standoff continues in Waco. All those stories at 10. What's on tap for tonight, Jay? For tonight, we'll look for our low to drop to 38. Tomorrow, partly sunny skies with a high of 58. All right, Jay, tonight's Stumper Answer, Chris Weber's real name is Mace. That's his real first name. By the way, the Comet playoff dates the 16th and 18th of April. Okay. Important dates. That's the latest from your news leader. We thank you for joining us. And we're back tonight at 10 with the latest news, weather, and sports. Join the newsroom after home front. Have a good evening. Good night. Twenty-one Alive, your number one news, the choice of the news generation.